says Senzo Tanaka is his Shidoshi. Look, the whole emphasis on me was I was a fake ninja. Here's the irony of the whole thing. I was the one turning around saying nobody's a ninja. It's all fake because there's no such thing as a ninja martial art. Hey guys, what makes Frank Dukes the ultimate warrior? Well, I think it has to do with Shidoshi, the principles and concept behind that, and he's going to explain that whole thing as well as share his thoughts on ninjutsu. Anyway, if you like this kind of content, please help support the channel. Hit the like button, subscribe, uh, comment on the video, engage in some way, maybe share the video if you enjoy it, share it with your martial arts or action movie friends. And for extra support, please consider checking out the Patreon. There's cool exclusive content on there. I even give you guys early access on certain videos. For as little as $3 a month, it really goes a long way in helping support the channel. Thanks. Still holds four world records. Uh, fastest knockout, fastest punch, fastest kick. Most consecutive knockouts in a single tournament, 56. What? 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 Where did he get all these, the, the fighting experience to win this event in the first place? Any fighting experience? <laughs> did he fight any point tournaments? No. Okay, did he fight any kickboxing matches? Any amateur kickboxing? Win any titles? No. Did he fight in any professional kickboxing matches? No. Where did he get all the great fight knowledge to be this great fighter that knocked out all these people? He says Senzo Tanaka is his Shidoshi. Look, the whole emphasis on me was I was a fake ninja. Here's the irony of the whole thing. I was the one turning around saying nobody's a ninja. It's all fake because there's no such thing as a ninja martial art. It doesn't exist. Show me anywhere forensic evidence, historical evidence of it. It only shows up as the added curriculum to martial arts in like Tenshin Katori Shinto Ru in Japan, the oldest schools of the samurai in Japan. 17 to 19 generations old, and yet you have these guys claiming to be these secret ninja masters, and they're the only real guys, and everybody else is a fake, and their system is 35 generations old, right? Twice as old as the oldest school of the samurai in Japan? I don't, I don't think so. Well, let me, let me ask you this, Frank, though. So your school was, back in the day, uh, marketed or, or called Duke's Rue Ninjitsu, though, right? Yes, because I'm using it in the proper context. Ninjutsu, J-U-A-T-S-U, is an assignation of a play. It's role playing. It was ninjutsu in the, at the turn of 1918, was started by a name Ito Kengitsu, who had a thing called the ninja experience. And what it was is the Japanese culture was moving from a warrior society to a mercantile society. And so what he did to find employment is he created what was roughly like be our version of the society of creative anachronism. He took all the folklore tales of like the ninja, what you would call ninja or shinobi, mm -hmm. right? And then they were called, they're called, you know, shinobi, rapa, supa, uh, come by, I mean, we can go on a whole bunch of different names for the same thing. Okay. And tales. And he created this, experience where you would go and you would basically learn martial arts and you'd learn all the espionage tricks and you would like play hide and seek basically and and it was a it was a recreational activity that got caught on later by moviegoers in japan and they created a television series called the ninja which became very popular in australia and that somehow they invented the idea that ninjutsu was a martial art it's not a martial art Ninjutsu is the battlefield skill, which is J, or I mean, ninjutsu, I'm sorry. Ninjutsu is the role playing, jutsu. Jitsu connotates battlefield skill, and that's the battlefield skills from within, is what that really means, or being sharper than battlefield skills of being sharper than the edge of a blade. Now, that's what that term means. It means you're eclectic in your training. It was a way in Japan of describing. I'm not following a, a Kuru path. I'm following a Gendai path. The Gendai path is modern. I'm straying. I'm implementing. I'm adapting. I'm, op I'm improvising. That was what, the way the term was intentional, intended to be used when you use the word ninjutsu. I used it that way because that's exactly what I did. And what do I say? Ru means root of. Well, root of what? Root of dukes, me. I couldn't be more honest uh, than that and saying, look, my ninjutsu, my way of 
finding what's within you. The battlefield skill that comes from within you through me. That's interesting. That's what the word means. Hey, speaking but people, of... Yeah, but people are ignorant, so they try to put me in the same box as their ignorance, and they say, well, no, there's only one thing in ninjutsu, and that's a martial arts skill, and that's what this... No, it doesn't even mean that. Okay? A great example of this is the word shidoshi. I was going to ask you about the, that. <laughs> I invented the damn word. It was popularized by blood sword. Now you look around it all today, and I'm, I'm shidoshi this, I'm shidoshi that. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I sit there and I just, and, and you're calling me a fraud. What's the difference if Bruce Springsteen is a Shidoshi? I just look, I just look at that. I go, but, you're calling how'd me you, a fraud. How do you come up with Shidoshi exactly? Well, okay. The word doesn't even exist in Japanese culture. I mean, if you talk to and someone who's not in the martial art culture, they'll tell you that they've never heard the word. It doesn't exist. I came up with the word to honor the fact that I built my roots on three different forms of Asian martial arts. I took Korean arts, I took Japanese art, and I took the Chinese arts. And so I picked a letter that represented each one of them. Mm -hmm. And that, that would lead to the interpretation of the word mushin uh, to be dead already. Mine, no mine. Okay. And so I wanted to create a title for myself that was exemplary to my students to say, hey, I'm not God. I'm not this. I'm not, not even, I'm not even calling them a teacher. Just this is who I am, and this is what I want you to become. I want you to aspire to be um, dead or ready. And the way you do that is there are four attributes. And these attributes, by the way, and these symbols used to hang in the school of uh, Bong Su Han. I used to learn by standing outside the schools of these greatest martial artists around, and I watched. And he had above his mirrors the three symbols that you see on the – in my – uh, symbols uh, for our Rue, and every student has them, and every student instructor wears them. And one stands for benevolence. One's, one has a double meaning. It stands for courage and valor. Courage, because courage is something you choose to do, and valor is something you do when, it's, when the situation is forced on you. Mm -hmm. okay? So there's two different th meanings there. One is choice, and one is a choice, but not with risk not taking the risk, you understand? And then the last one is wisdom. And though if you, if you, the idea is she, the four ways, benevolence, courage, valor, wisdom. If you follow these four principles, be benevolent enough to show mercy to your worst enemy. Have the courage to take on new things, new responsibilities. And when they become too hard for you, have the valor to see your obligations through, even when you're facing overwhelming odds. But if you do all, anything of all else, you act, you act logically out of wisdom, never out of emotion. Those are the four attributes that I was stressing to my students. Those four things, if you do all those four things, you, and, and, that being the way, do, which is a Korean word for doing something, going that path. Do means path. And she, the last she, which was a symbol for corpse, four ways of the corpse, four ways of the dead already. Hmm. Being four ways of being dead to temptation, being dead to the vices of the world, being dead to your own ambitions, being loyal to yourself. That is what the term Shidoshi really means. That's what it was intended to do. And it was intended to inspire people to raise their level of character and being, to become high functioning adults, not just caught up in glory or, you know, the making of money for money's sake, to really just come to a different level of, of, of humanity where you can be the warrior, be the guy who looks out for the guy who's weaker than you, uh, who you're going to take care of. That's what the term shows. And then I watched it get perverted, you know? I watched it get perverted, and all of a sudden it became a title and a rank. And that's why I just I shake my head, because people don't even understand what, it, what why it was created and what it means. They use it as a for boasting rights, the opposite of what it should be. Very interesting. That's fascinating.
Yeah, adds a lot uh, a clarity to things, you know. You could have killed him, couldn't you? Right. Well, why didn't you then? Because, Daniel, sir, for person with no forgiveness in heart, living even worse punishment.